We are now going to be talking about how to use the idea of groups and cohorts inside of Postdoc. Postdoc is remarkably good at creating these relationships between different events and properties and people and groups and cohorts and allowing you to really dynamically update those to answer your questions very quickly. Let me show you exactly how we're gonna do that. But first off, my name is JJ, founder over at Vision Labs. We help teams large and small implement data um, and measurement solutions to get to action as fast as possible. So I'm gonna be using it through the lens of both marketing and data and using a technical tool to get to those answers. Let's hop into it. So uh, this is the structure I like to kind of really, really loosely use when using a post hog. We have at the very bottom, we have properties that are a function or inside of events. So let's just take a very simple idea of the event of a page view. The property would say which page view it was. What was the path of the URL? What was the slug of the URL? What was uh, the browser? Uh, was it Safari? Was it Chrome? Was it mobile? Was it desktop? All of those are properties that live within the event, okay? So then events belong to people, right? So people do events where you have multiple events. So say they paid a page, they then added to cart, they then uh, signed up for your newsletter, they then created an account, they started a trial. They are then in people. Then we have this idea of cohorts. So cohorts are a group of people who have done an action or inaction. Uh, they could either say, hey, somebody who's never done this event or who's done this event or who has never done this event with this property of this uh, or has done this event of this property of this or will do this. The idea of a cohort is to group a bunch of people with similar characteristics together. They might not be related, but they are similar in characteristics. So you could say, hey, I want a group of all, I want a cohort of all of my pro members, right? So anyone who's a pro member, we will have that in a cohort. Everyone who's viewed content on our website, that could be a cohort. Anyone who's upgraded as a cohort. Anyone who's viewed 10 pieces of content, a cohort. Then we have this concept called groups. And groups are a whole other type of way to think about it. And it takes a lot of implementation to actually get this right. Groups are when you have a platform, usually this is 100% of software, a function of software is groups, uh, where you have multiple people that belong to the same organization. Uh, let's just say, for example, you offer group plans to your software and they have multiple seats. So they have 10 seats in a group. And you want to know, hey, what uh, number of groups are being utilized every single week? So we have 100 organizations. Of those 100 organizations, how many are being used? I mean, their accounts are being used or how much uh, volume is being used across their accounts. Groups group people together that have a uh, similar billing or a similar account structure, right? So groups is more defined. Cohorts is undefined where you get to define what properties and events come together to make that happen. Hopefully that made sense and the illustrations uh, helped there. Now, let's talk about how do we actually do this. We are going to blur a lot of things here because this is actually one of our uh, customers' uh, accounts, but I wanna show you and give you an example here of how this could work. Hey, quick interruption. My name is JJ. I wanted to extend the opportunity for you to have a quick and simple audit. Is PostHog right for you? Are you utilizing it correctly? Go to visionlabs.com forward slash contact. Just mention PostHog in your comment section. We offer a free audit to PostHog uh, customers. If you would like to uh, understand, are you utilizing correctly? Should you be using more features, more functionalities? to get more bang for your buck and make your data a profit center, not necessarily a cost center. So here you create a cohort. Uh, you can hit a new cohort here and we can say, hey, this is a test of uh, quiz completions. Uh, this customer, uh, they have quizzes within their application, right? And so here we could say, hey, they completed the event of a quiz. All right, and then this, they did it after 30 days, right? So if we hit save, what will immediately happen is it will take a moment and then it will put a sample list of people down below. So here are 1600 people uh, who have completed a quiz and it will pull their anonymous ID, their person ID. I don't know why this is, maybe there is a reason or not reason. In this view, it never shows their actual email address even though every single one of the people has been logged in. So if I click on their person profile, you will then see uh, this is actually a person. It's blurred for you, but it's an actual email address who is logged in there. 
So here we have all 1,600 people who have completed a quiz uh, in the last 30 days. They've been added to this thing. We could also do anyone who did complete a sequence of events, right? So uh, they completed a sequence of events. So a cohort of people who did this. So let's just say, for example, they viewed uh, the pricing page. Um, and let's just use the page view for the sake of this, okay? Uh, so here, if we have like this page view um, and you can add a criteria here, uh, and then you can follow by that. One thing about uh, these cohorts is that you cannot use filters. So it becomes where you have to make sure you have an event to do that. So let me just do, do uh, the cart viewed. So they viewed the cart and then they purchased. So here uh, we completed the sequence of events of the viewed cart and they did purchase, right? And that is going to be the like sequence here. So what we recommend usually, if I hit save on this, it will then repopulate here. Uh, what we can recommend is that you can create uh, specific cohorts around every step of your funnels. And that way you can either choose to retarget them if they are identified, or you can choose to uh, re-engage uh, them in your email list by using webhooks or things like that. We do have one customer as an example here that has a bunch of videos. They love to use videos in their marketing. So anybody who has watched more than five minutes of any video, they get added to a group in their CRM, right? So they're within this cohort here and this cohort triggers an event to go to their CRM. And so here is a list of people, right? Who have completed the sequence of events of viewing cart and then purchased. And they've done that within 15 days. So that is a really, really good example of how you can use these cohorts to your advantage. One thing that you really do need to understand is where do you use these cohorts, right? So this, uh, let me turn this back to quiz so that we don't actually uh, mess up our, not mess up, but like, uh, let's just make sure we name everything, right? Completed an event of quiz. And we're gonna hit save on that. Okay, so. Now, where does this show up in real life is the question that everybody's got. So if you hold, go over to like a dashboard, for example, let's just pull up any specific dashboard. I'm going to pull up uh, one of these pricing to purchase ones. So here we have uh, the conversion rate from viewing the pricing page to purchasing uh, of these different types of things. You can in, come in here and add in properties and you can say, hey, I want to see the breakdown of I want to see the filter or breakdown of the cohorts. And then here is the one that we just created, the test quiz completions. And now we can apply this filter and say, hey, if someone completed a quiz, what happens, right? How does this look? And you can see here that the amount of people who buy who've completed a quiz, that's usually people that are upgrading, uh, is remarkably high, right? So anybody who's completed a quiz and then they go on and then they view an item and then they purchase in this customer's example, extremely high. So like, let's push people into quizzes because we want to see them have that quiz uh, enabled. The one question and the one problem that you run into with uh, using cohorts is when did they enter? So for example, in this cohort, based off of this data, they could have purchased and then completed a quiz. So keep that in mind. Uh, the cohort is user-based, right? Not event-based. So you can roll that cohort of people and it will look at their entire journey, right? They, their entire uh, person profile with inside of post hog. So you can use these cohorts to your advantage to do that same thing. One other uh, example that you can do is if you're ever like, oh my goodness, I really need to do something. Uh, you can come over here and you can click on this far right and you can actually export uh, all the columns of all the users. That will give you a CSV that you can say, hey, we have this CSV of all of our customers, of all of our users. Uh, that allows you to do that. So uh, now that's how cohorts work, right? Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Idea of taking a quiz, of viewing a glossary, for example, all those different types of things. Now let's talk about groups. Groups is an add-on. So this is something that you have to pay for. I'm gonna hit this button right here. And it is an event-based uh, thing. So if you come over here to group analytics and you hit view pricing, uh, the first million group event calls are free. The first one to two million are seven whatever millionth of a cent there. But this is an addition to your normal event volume, right? And so this is something that we really, uh, we uh, personally on our team, we're, like, we, we struggle with to get this nailed down every time. And we've got a pretty good system now. So I wanna share with you how you can think about this. Is groups is this simple rule, is every event must have the group identifier. 
and that's the rule. <laughs> that's how you got to think about it. So um, it's really funny because we, uh, we we did this in so many ways where you have a group call and then you want to have a, 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 a person, they identify app to identify a user. It doesn't work the same way that you work, work for people, right? With people, you use the identify uh, one time and that identifies them when you know in a unique identifier, you know the ID of that person. This, the groups function, you have to send the same event uh, of the same ID with the group ID for every single event. Otherwise, it does not work and you don't get to have access to the roll up functionality of grouping people together into groups. So there are some workarounds that we've done with cohorts to try and get the same functionality. But if you have the budget, it's not gonna cost a lot of money. And if you have the implementation specialties, use the group function if it applies to you. It makes a lot of sense in the case scenarios where you can use it. And then what that will do, I just want to show you here. I can't, I can't share my screen and show one of our customers that does have the group functionality enabled. But what that does is that a lot of your uh, things here is that you now have this group function where you can see all of your groups and it looks just like cohorts. So you have the same idea of here's every group that we have. So if you have uh, enterprise plans that you have multiple people, they would show up there and then you can see the utilization. You can see how much, uh, what's the stick of the entire group. If one person's using it, it makes a different person every day. You want to group those together. So just to recap really quickly, we've got uh, properties that are open to events that are open to people. People that then are used to uh, use those event properties to create cohorts based off of the events. And then those people can then be rolled up into groups. So just to make this really simple, let me make some arrows is that people get rolled up into cohorts. And then people also get rolled up into groups. Events get rolled up into people. And then also can go up there as well. And then uh, uh, properties pretty much only go up into events. And that allows you to have those properties used everywhere. So without any further ado, I hope this was helpful and you have a better understanding of where you can use the combination of events, people, cohorts, and groups to make your post hog experience amazing.